in David Data's work, he talks about the first stage man being the stage where a guy is more like, it's my way or the highway, bitch. Think of a biker. Think of a guy who's the king of the castle, right? So I set the rules. I'm going to do what I want to do. Then in the second stage, it's the guy who's kind of into compromise. It's all about the nice guy. You know, nice guy syndrome. What do you need? You know, let's go on a date. Where do you want to go to dinner? Let me just make you happy. She'll ask an opinion. You know, where, where, where do you want to go? And he might say something like, well, I just want to go where you want to go. Because when you're happy, I'm happy. I was completely this guy. I don't know if I was ever that first stage guy. I mean, I wish I could say that I had a little experience of that, but uh, it sucked because I never got anything I wanted out of life. I was constantly, thought I was constantly giving. You're actually constantly taking, by the way, but I thought I was constantly giving, but I was actually constantly trying to manipulate to get validation. And that's most men I see today. Now the third stage man, he's more like, I'm gonna step back into my masculinity and I'm gonna feel into you so deep that I'm gonna lead or be the structure in the relationship from the place of what is this, where does this relationship need to go? Not necessarily what you want, not what I want, but what is the relationship as its own third entity need? Well, it may be different than what both of us want. And that's a very powerful thing because it's not about compromise anymore. It's about truth. It's about what's our highest truth and what's going to raise us to the next level because I don't want to have a relationship that's going to die. And I, I don't want it to be all about you. I don't want it to be all about me. I want it to be about something greater. All dating is about giving. But I couldn't see this when I was a nice guy because as a nice guy, I think I'm giving the whole time. I'm out there, what do you want? What do you need? And it's not working. But is that giving? It all depends on what's going on under the surface. And until you resolve that, it's actually not giving. It's let me be who you want me to be so you'll give back to me. And that's taking. That's taking the whole time. And this is why the bad boys would get the girl, the first stage guys. Can you see that a bad boy, when he looks at a girl and says, I want you, he means it and she feels it, that you're fucking sexy. Whereas the nice guys, well, let me buy you flowers just to get you into bed. And I'm gonna, then I'm going to die to myself that I actually want to get you into bed because you haven't given me sexual permission yet. And can you see that how that third stage is like the hybrid? It's the best of both worlds. It's beautiful. If you're a nice guy, it's a beautiful place to be because you're one step away from the third stage. You're actually developing your ability to feel emotions. You ever notice that the nice guys, even though they're trying to give you everything you want, give the woman everything she wants and their friends everything they want, they're learning to read subtle cues. They're learning to feel people just to be like, what do you need? Where do you need it? And when you wake up to that and you start saying, no, stop, where are my boundaries? That ability doesn't go away. Suddenly you can read and feel into people deeper than you ever have before, but you don't have to jump when they say jump anymore. And in that, you build the third stage man. You start building this idea, this guy that can feel your emotions and sit there and ground you and be there with you, but he's not going to lose his shit just because she's a little upset. He's not going to lose his presence just because she's a little, little mad right now. He can actually be there and be with her emotions, feel her emotions, channel her emotions, which is what she needs, which is what's going to ultimately turn her on more. Whereas if you start catering and trying to solve every single little problem, there's nothing more annoying. I'm going to fix everything for you and then we'll be good. Let's just, let's just make it so that we're happy 24 hours a day. That's my goal. And that goal never comes, right? The third stage guy realizes that you're never going to be happy 24 hours a day. And in that is happiness. Anybody ever go to a scary movie to get scared or a sad movie to just cry? Women do it all the time right? It's, it felt so cathartic. It felt so good. I just cried through the whole movie and now I feel great. There's actually something in that. When you start moving into that part of you that loves to feel, like Jordan was talking about yesterday, diving into all those deep emotions, those deep feelings, and you disconnect from them meaning anything, life becomes beautiful. You can be there with somebody and share deep emotion, deep feeling, deep thought, deep expression. There's a proactive and a reactive side to everything. There's a proactive anger and there's reactive anger. We have a client that's learning to walk. He's uh, had a disability that's caused him to not be able to walk for his whole life. And he walks with a walker and he's learned that he's gotten to a cane now. He's learning to walk on two legs and just stand up and, and he's, really, he's really going for it. And what he mostly uses is his anger to get there. He gets angry, he gets pissed off and develops a new ability. He pushes through things. That's a really powerful proactive side of anger. The masculine can have a proactive side too. Stepping into your power, feeling into people so deep that you can, you can be there for them. Grounding people when they're emotional without trying to make them wrong. I think a lot of men today have lost their, their uh, because of that second stage, that nice guy development, they've lost the realization of the power that they have. The power they have over women, the power they have over um, life and to, to create their own reality. 
to be creative, to be powerful, you have to be in touch with your sexual energy because your sexual energy is the creative energy that manifests. It's the energy that produces in the world. And as you get down low in your body and you start feeling from your core, relating to your body, communicating from feeling, communicating from emotion, you actually start stepping in attention with life and creating, penetrating, in a sense, birthing ideas. As long as you need somebody to love you outside yourself, you're never going to get love. As soon as you start to love yourself, love will come to you. It shows up. If you had a sense of self-esteem inside, you had a sense of self-love inside, and you didn't need security, you were willing to just go off and have adventures and go for it, go for your dreams, even if you lost everything, because you know what? My dreams are more important than dying uh, with them unfulfilled. Then uh, think of how much, how different you would seem to the world. Think of how much better you would feel inside. And that's what all this work is about. It's about developing that energy, that third stage energy within us as men. It's about bringing it out, using it to not just change our lives, but then ultimately change the world. Because now we can say no to the world easily, which means we can be truly giving. A lot of people are out there trying to give. I mean, you guys all probably know somebody like this. They're trying to give, give, give when they can't even take care of themselves. It's a shitty thing because what they're doing is they're, they're really chasing validation. All they're giving comes from a place usually of, of validation seeking. Our relationship to tension is equal to our relationship to our third stage, is also equal to our relationship to women. The men that are really solid and enjoy tension, that have mastered the art of, of dancing, playing, flowing with tension, are the best manifestors and the most attractive men in the world. Give me a stereotype of, a, of an attractive man, firefighter. Now he selflessly runs into burning buildings and he has to stay completely conscious when he does it. Can you see the giving in that? Can you see the presence, the development of presence? Can you see how that energy can be felt by women? Now think back thousands of years, what were women looking for in men? If it's in their genes, what, what would they be looking for? Yeah, protection would be one. The ability to provide food, to get things done. The ability to master tension, day-to-day -day tension. Not just sexual tension, but day-to-day -day tension. If you guys can't master day-to-day -day tension, stepping out there, building a career, um, I mean, shit, taking out the trash. You're just sitting on the couch all day. Little things like this to the big things, going after a career, building your business, going after your dreams. And you have the curse of the middle class and you're sitting there avoiding all discomfort. Imagine how attractive you would feel. Could you, could you go out there a thousand years ago and kill animals and bring food home, get shelter, protect her, protect her and her babies, right? So you don't have to be able to go do all that stuff anymore, but you do need to have that powerful relationship. We're, we're all like sitting there as men and I'm completely, I was completely guilty of this saying, I, I'm going to get all the stress out of my life. I'm going to get all the tension out of my life because stress kills. I'm going to avoid stress at all costs. And so I'm finding every which way I can to have a nice, calm life. We crave tension by nature, right? So what am I doing? I'm getting my tension from watching sports. I'm getting my tension from why going to movies and sitting in an air-conditioned theater and having my popcorn and watching somebody else do all the work. We still want it, but we get addicted to, to alternative forms of it. We get addicted to seeing it out there in the world rather than living it for ourselves. And groups like this are groups of men that are starting to step into their third stage and live it for themselves. And I want to invite you guys into looking at your lives and, and really taking inventory of where you're avoiding the tension and where you're stepping into it, where you're actually learning to actually enjoy tension, to play in it, to dance in it, to turn it into an art. You keep coming back, keep putting yourself in the tension, keep pushing yourself. If you hold in your mind, that thing you most want to create through consistency, if you stay really powerfully consistent, you will change a little bit each day and each day faster than the day before. And then one day, bam, everything changes overnight. And then you're shocked because you don't understand how it was ever hard to begin with. That's what, that what seems so hard now seems almost like expected, normal, just shows up, right? One day, you just realize that, God, there's women everywhere. I have no trouble meeting women anymore. They just show up in my life. And you wonder why they were ever hard to meet in the first place. That's because the whole time you were pushing them away. And by doing this work consistently every day, you broke up the whole paradigm and the whole philosophy, the way you were thinking around women that caused you to push them away. That caused you to be saying no to them every day, which is all we're really doing. And my biggest lesson came from my first few heartbreaks. What would it be like to be the master at the art of creating sexual tension with women? To be so good that you don't even think about it. You just do it because that's who you are.